Got another super chat. This one from King of the North. My man, King of the North, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you as always, King of the North, who writes, no skins made the top 100. Best case scenario, who do you think can make it next year? That's a great um, talking point because I wasn't going to bring that up now. I was going to talk about that um, a little bit later on. But since you brought it to the forefront, let's discuss that now because I got a tweet from my man, JP, on Twitter, and he hit me up. He was like, hey, man, um, matter of fact, let me see. I probably can pull it up real quick. I can read you exactly what JP sent me on Twitter and my response to what JP sent me on Twitter. So JP sent me on Twitter that, let's see, um, here it is. Not a single red skin on the NFL top 100. That's a problem. And I, to which I responded, it is, but it isn't. And the reason, and I got a, a number of different responses. Um, Trayvon Johnson's response, I thought was priceless. It's gold. He says, I mean, the list is horrible every year and a big ass popularity contest to me, but honestly, um, don't matter. It, it, it does matter in the sense that even, yes, it's just like the Pro Bowl in, in, a, in effect, it is a popularity contest. However, that being said, you want to have players on it. Why? Because that means you have players that are good and highly thought of in league circles amongst their peers more specifically because the top 100 is really made up and comprised of what players think. I think it's faulty the way it's done in the voting system. Um, I think the list is, is a joke. It's fraudulent. But who cares about that? The, the fact is, no, it's not important that the Redskins don't have any players up there because the, the list itself is trash. However, you do want, just because the list is trashed, doesn't mean you don't want players on the list from the Redskins football team, or excuse me, from the Washington football team. Um, so yes, obviously you want more players than zero, on the, just like you want players to make the Pro Bowl. Even though the Pro Bowl is trash, nobody watches it anymore. You still, and, and it's a popularity contest and so many guys back out. You're getting third and fourth alternates making it. Who cares? You still want players to actually make the Pro Bowl from your team. Same thing with the top 100 list. It just shows that you have good football players, but the list itself is faulty. We know this. R remember when Donovan McNabb made it as a red, Redskin? Like, come on. We understand that this list is trash. However, you still want players on it. That being said, um, my man King of the North asked the question, what player could I see, could I imagine making it from the Washington football team next year? Uh, so my immediate response would be Terry McLaurin is the first guy that comes off the top of the dome. Now, obviously, if Dwayne Haskins plays well, he could easily make the list. I mean, look at some of the guys that were on the list. Can you believe Jimmy Garoppolo actually placed higher than Dak Prescott? I mean, that, the list is trash. I get it. But things like that just are crazy. It's asinine to me. That, that's nor here nor there. But I mean, hell, half of the season went by and Ryan Tannehill didn't even start yet. This is a guy that made the top 100 list. So in my mind, I'm thinking Dwayne Haskins doesn't have to do all that much to make the list. He's just got to be really good. He's got to be much improved, obviously, especially from what everyone saw last year, especially if they didn't watch him at the end of the season when you started to see the dramatic improvements. But to me, Terry McLaurin is the first guy that comes to mind. If you're asking who I think can be on this list, Terry McLaurin is a guy that I think has already gotten attention around league circles. People are looking for this guy. I think people already respect his game. And I think after putting up some big numbers, it's going to be tough in the market that we're in in terms of us being down in the dumps. No one really respecting his football team, his organization, and what it stands for right now. And no one really paying attention. We don't have any primetime games. So it's going to be hard for the outside media to understand just how good he is. But you put up numbers and they will come. Eventually, they'll come around. And I think Terry uh, is going to have a chance to eclipse 1,000 yards this year. If he stays healthy, we'll knock on a little bit of wood for that. But he's the first guy that comes to mind. Um, obviously, Chase Young. The, the man didn't play a snap. And he was already in a major NFL video that the players cut uh, when talking about uh, coronavirus and Black Lives Matter and things of that nature. So that tells you that this is a guy that is already respected and he hasn't even played a single down yet. So Chase Young is another guy. If you want to go one from the defensive side of the football, one from the offensive side of the football, those are the two players that come to the mind immediately when I think about players that can make this list next season. Um, but again, 
if you play well, they will find you, okay? Eventually, everyone will come around. So to me, the list isn't that important, but you want players on it. Like our claim to fame for years was, hey, worst case scenario, either Trent Williams or Ryan Kerrigan will be on the list or both of them, okay? We always had one guy, and then when Jordan Reed was healthy, Jordan will make the list. But we don't have that anymore. We have to reestablish that. That's why it feels like we're starting anew. And I'm actually excited about it. Like I said, I'm a Memphis Grizzlies fan in the NBA. And we are a young, we're a young basketball team. And it's fun watching that process. Same thing with the Atlanta Braves. Young team. The, the, the nickname for them just a year ago was the Baby Braves. Like, it's fun when you're in this rebuilding process, but you speed it up. No one expected the Memphis Grizzlies. I just tweeted out a video uh, about no one respecting the Grizzlies, expecting them to finish last or one of the worst teams. We're going to lose a bunch of games. And here we are holding on uh, for dear life, I may add, but here we are holding on to the eighth seed in the NBA playoffs as, as it stands. And so the Braves, no one was talking about the Braves two years ago. They snuck up on everybody, won the division. I don't, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with, with the Washington football team. I, I don't expect them to skip steps. It's easier in those other sports to skip steps. Unlike football, where I must admit, unlike the other sports, football is set up for parity. It's set up for a team to come out of nowhere and win. However, you've got to have pieces already in place to do that. Uh, in the NBA, it's a lot easier if you get a star. We got a star in John ja Morant. That changes everything. In baseball, you got a couple of really good players, and then you get a star like Ronald Acuna come along, and other guys kind of start, and, and you got Freddie Freeman. Pieces were already in place in Washington, okay? Uh, you had a guy that led the league in batting in the National League um, at the top of your uh, lineup in, in, in Ozzy Albies. Like, there were pieces already in place in Atlanta. It just all came together. That's not here in Washington. So you got to start putting those building blocks together. That's why I feel like, no one's going to be talking about us just like no one's talking about us this year. No one's going to be talking about us in 2021. And I'm not punting on 2020. Don't get it twisted. I'm just telling you that I expect us to put pieces in place. That's why playing this season is so imperative because we're going to put the pieces in place that are going to allow us to potentially jump up and bite people in 2021. That's how I feel. We're going to put the pieces in place. We're going to figure out left tackle this year. If not, we're going to be able to address it next offseason. We're going to figure out who our big-time wide receivers are. It, it can't just be Terry. We need at least one more guy. He needs a tag team partner. Is that guy here? Is that guy Steven Sims? Is that guy going to be An Antonio Gandy Golden? The Gandy man. All right, what, what are you going to do at tight end? Is, is the answer not on the roster right now? We'll figure that out. Like, these are all things that we'll be able to figure out. Is Dwayne the guy or not? We'll be able to kind of lean towards yes or no after a full 16-game slate. So, to me, we'll put those pieces in place and then you'll start to see us build upon that and potentially be able to leap up and bite some people when they're not expecting it in 2021. But again, to answer your question, Terry McLaurin on the offensive side of the football and on the defensive side of the football, Chase Young, to me, are the guys that stand out. A guy like Matt Ioannidis could already be on this list. And that's part of playing for a team that isn't any good that nobody cares about other than the fan base itself. Matt Ioannidis probably should already be on that list. He's that good. Jonathan Allen could easily, when I, if I go and look at that list, I probably will find two or three interior defensive linemen. And I'm like, Jonathan Allen had a better season than that guy. And, and it's not full body of work. It's who was the best 100 players in last season's NFL calendar season. And so I think that's another misconception of the list as well. But Nobody cares. At the end of the day, those are the two guys that I think have a realistic shot of cracking the list come next season. Thank you for the Super Chat King of the North. Louis.